Hi, I'm Lisa Brayson, the Natural Sciences Librarian here at the UHD Library. Normally we would be holding this lab session in person and learn to use both print and online resources to complete the assignment, but obviously we can't do that right now. Instead, this video will introduce you to online resources available from the UHD Library as well as reliable resources that can be found on the web. I can help you navigate these resources, but I am not a chemist, so if you have specific questions about the chemistry involved, please contact your instructor. Here's the outline for the session. First, we'll talk about the assignment, the procedure sheet, and the lab report form. Then there will be a brief introduction to the library homepage. Then we'll look at online resources for chemical property information which is item A of the procedures. Then we'll look at a couple of resources for finding a chemical definition, which is item B of the procedures. Item C of the procedures, finding an article from a known citation is next. And finally, we'll explore the SciFinder database to answer item D in the procedures. You should have a copy of the assignment and a copy of the lab report form. Your instructor will assign each of you a number. You will use that number with the corresponding line number on the searching the chemical literature procedures. For example, if you are assigned the number 5, you'll use the information found in line number 5 of the assignment sheet to complete the required procedures. The procedures have three columns. Column 1 is a chemical term that will, you will need to define. This is item B in the procedures. In our example, line number 5 is acetyl value. Column 2 is a brief citation to a journal article you'll need to locate. This is item C in the procedures. In line number 5, it's from the J Chem EDUC volume 89, page 125. And column 3 is a compound or substance you'll need to find properties for. This is item A of the procedures. In our example, the compound or substance in line number 5 is N-heptane. You will also use this compound to complete item D of the procedures using the SciFinder database. Note that the information in the three columns are independent pieces of information. The definition, article citation, and compound have no relation to one another. You'll put your answers on the Chem 2101 Organic Chemistry Lab 1 Experiment 1 Searching the Chemical Literature Lab Report form provided by your instructor. Before we begin working on the assignment, we'll have a brief introduction to the library homepage. Let's begin with the library homepage. From the homepage, you can search the library's resources using our LibSearch feature. We'll go into that more later in the session. Using the gray navigation links on the left side of the page, you can search the library catalog, Locate online journals, search individual databases, and use our research guides. Research guides are here to help you get started finding resources in your subject area. Some are also available for specific classes. On the Chemistry Research Guide, you will find links to databases that help you find articles, and databases and websites that can help you find chemical properties and spectra data. There is also citing and writing help available here too. One of the most important parts of the library homepage is the Ask a Librarian section on the right side of the page. This will list all of the ways you can contact a librarian including our 24-7 chat service, which is available at 3 a.m. or on the weekends or even on holidays. You will be chatting with a library that has access to all of our resources 
and can help you with any questions you have. If they cannot answer your question immediately, they will forward it to someone who can help you. You can also reach us by email or make an appointment to speak to a librarian in person, by phone, or via Zoom. In-person appointments are available only when the library is open to students. You can check our Frequently Asked Questions list to see if the answer you need is there. You can always contact the librarian if you don't find it. If you have any trouble accessing one of the library's electronic resources, please fill out the Report Access Issues form so we can address your problem as quickly as possible. A research guide has been created to assist you in completing the, this lab. From the library homepage, use the gray navigation menu on the left and click on Research Guides. Look for Course Guides at the bottom of the Guides list. Choose Chem 2101 Organic Chemistry 1 Laboratory. This guide contains links to the online resources we'll be talking about. Each section lets you know what kind of information you can find in the resource listed. Item A in the procedures asks you to locate 10 properties for your compound. Properties 1 and 2, boiling point and melting point, require two references. So that means you'll need to find both boiling and melting points in two online resources. The other properties require only one reference, so any of the online resources discussed may be used to find these properties. The sample compound for this online session is formaldehyde. When you're accessing UHD library resources from on campus, you'll need to log into the library using your network ID and password, the same ID and password you use to log into Blackboard. The first resource we'll look at is Lang's Handbook of Chemistry, which is an ebook held by the UHD library. When you click the title link on the research guide, the system will take you to the library catalog record for Lang's. In the middle of the record, there's a section titled View Online. Under that, it says Full Text Availability, eBook Central, UH Downtown, click here for access. Click on the eBook Central link. From the entry from Langs, scroll down the page to the Table of Contents. Look for Section 2, Organic Chemistry. Click the Show Subsections link. Section 2.2, Physical Properties. Click the title. Scroll down to Table 2.20. This table lists the physical properties of the compounds in alphabetical order. Use the arrows in the upper right of the menu bar at the top of the page to quickly scroll through the compounds until you find yours. This is a very large table, so it may take you some time to find your compound. Here's what the entry for formaldehyde looks like. Return to the eBook Central entry by using the Browser's Back button. eBook Central provides examples for citing this book. Below the picture of the book, you'll see a link that says Cite Book. Click the link. There are several citation formats listed but you may have to reformat the information if your instructor is using a different citation style.
Our second resource is Chem ID Plus. Chem ID Plus is a database from the National Institutes of Health, National Library of Medicine. It contains more than 400,000 chemical records. It's a pretty straightforward interface. The default search parameter is automatic, which means the database will search whatever you put in the box. There's a drop-down menu that allows you to search by name, formula, and other criteria if you choose. Just enter your search term in the Substance Identification box and hit Search. The top of the results page provides a description of the compound, the molecular formula, structure, and one very important piece of information. The RN, or registration number. The registration number is synonymous with the compound's CAS number. Many resources refer to the CAS number rather than the registration number. The CAS number is the Chemical Abstract Society number and is like the Social Security number for a chemical compound. Each number is unique to a single compound. No two substances can have the same CAS number. There are a few cases where a compound could have more than one CAS number. The CAS, or registration number for formaldehyde, is 50-00-0. Having a specific number for your compound makes searching many of the resources we're looking at easier. Compounds can have a lot of synonyms, but they have only one CAS number and you can use to locate information. And most resources allow you to search by CAS number. Below the basic description information there is a tabbed area that contains more detailed information about the substance. The Names and Synonyms tab lists other names used for the compound. The Registry Numbers tab again has the CAS number as well as other numbers for specific government agency listings. The most important number to know is the CAS number. The Toxicity tab lists the effects the compound has on specific organisms including animals and humans. There are citations to the source material used to compile the list. And the last tab contains some of the physical properties of the compound, including melting point and boiling point. ChemSpider is the third resource we'll look at. ChemSpider is a free online database from the Royal Society of Chemistry in the UK. It is mainly a structure database, but it contains information about physical properties as well. To search ChemSpider, just enter your term in the search box at the top of the page. The results show the structure and formula at the top, and below that there are tabs that have further information, including the Names tab, which includes the RN number, the CAS number, for the compound, 50, Dash zero zero dash zero. The Properties tab shows various properties in sections. These are experimental values, so when you click on a property you may see several entries. For example, in the Boiling Point section for formaldehyde, there are three different entries. The first entry has a hyperlink that takes you to the source of the data. In this case, it's a link to a government agency. The Properties tab also has links to predicted properties that have been developed by different laboratories. 
You can also find some spectra information on ChemSpider as well. The fourth resource is the NIST Chemistry Webbook. This is a free government database from the National Inst Institute of Standards and Technology, a part of the Department of Commerce. You can search this database with several different entry points. The compound formula, the compound name, the CAS number, or the structure. Just choose which way you'd like to search. Let's search by name. Click the name link and type in your compound name. You see the CAS number, formula, structure, and a list of the compound synonyms. Under Other Data Available, you can find the IR spectrum. Some of the most important information you can know about your substance is the dangers it poses to humans and animals, and how to manage an exposure to the compound. This information can be listed as toxicity or hazards. Many of the resources we've looked at have hazard or toxicity information, like ChemID+. But a standardized format for this kind of information is the safety data sheet. If you've been in a laboratory or anywhere there are chemicals or other dangerous substances, you've seen a diamond-shaped sign divided in four colored sections that indicate the type of hazards present. These signs relate to governmentally re regulated safety data sheets. These documents provide complete detailed information on hazards and toxicity that cannot be included on the sign. One resource for safety data sheets is the Chemical Safety Company. You can search for the SDS with the name or CAS number of your substance. Brief chemical information is displayed and a blue button in the lower right corner will take you to the full SDS sheet. Another resource for SDS is Sigma Aldrich. Type your compound name in the search box at the top. The display lists the compound and to the right there is a link for the SDS. Resources for finding pricing. Sometimes when you're working in a lab, you'll run out of substances you're working with and need to order more. Sigma Aldridge is a chemical supply company and the site we just used to find the safety data sheet also contains price information. Click the pricing link and the order form indicates pack size or quantity and the price in dollars. You can also find pricing information from the chemical supply company Fisher Scientific. You can search the site with the name or CAS number of your substance. Using formaldehyde's CAS number 50-00-0, look through the results for entries that show the compound structure. Entry number 3, for example. Click the link and pricing information is displayed. Be sure that when you write down the price, you also write down the corresponding quantity. While some of the resources we've already looked at have spectral data, a specialized free database is the Spectral Database for Organic Compounds, or SDBS. 
The SDBS is a SPECTRE database produced in Japan. To search the database, you must accept the disclaimer on the opening page. Once you do that, you can search for your compound by name, formula, or CAS number. You can also choose the spectrum you're looking for, or you can search all just by clicking the search button at the bottom of the page. I'll type formaldehyde in the name box. Then I'm going to check 1HNMR, or proton NMR, on the right and click search. The table displayed has the SDBS entry number, then the molecular formula, and then the molecular weight. The next columns include the types of spectra. If the spectrum is available, there will be a Y in the column. If it isn't, there will be an N. Click on the Y under 1HNMR, and that spectrum will be displayed. You can also search all available spectra for a compound. Using the example ethanol, the results indicate that all spectra types are available. Item B in the procedures for this assignment asks you to define a term. The following two resources will help you find those definitions. Holly's Condensed Chemical Dictionary. This is an ebook available from the UHD Library. Click on the title link, link, and just as we did when searching Lang's Handbook of Chemistry, the system will take you to the library catalog record for Holly's. Click on ebook central for access. Let's say the definition I've been assigned is aberrant. Scroll down the table of contents to the A entries. Click the link. Scroll down until you find your term. The second resource for definitions is Van Nordstrand's Encyclopedia of Chemistry, also an ebook available from the UHD Library. Rather than going through the library catalog, the system takes you directly to the ebook. You use this book a little differently than Holly's. Rather than looking at the table of contents, you just type your term in the search box. The resources we've gone over so far will help you complete item A of your lab assignment, finding the physical properties of your compound, and item B, the definition of your term. Item C, finding an article from a known citation, is the next part of the assignment to complete. There are several ways to find articles about a topic you're interested in researching. Whether your instructor has provided you with a citation to look up, or you found a citation in a book or paper you'd like to read, knowing how to look up an article with a citation you already have is a handy skill. To find an article from a known citation, first look at the citation itself. Your citation will have, at minimum, the journal title abbreviation, the volume, and the date of publication. Sometimes you'll have a complete citation, including author, title, and issue number. In this example, the parts of the citation are labeled. Tellinghusen, J, the author, 2016, the year of publication, using least squares to solve systems of equations, the article title, J, Chem, EDUC, the journal title abbreviation, 93, the volume number, 6, the issue number, and 1061 to 1067, the page numbers. 
In order to locate the article, the most important piece of information is the journal title. Many times the citation you have will have a journal title abbreviation rather than the full journal title. When looking for articles at the UHD Library, you'll need to know the complete journal title, and the easiest way to find that out is to Google the abbreviation. Put J Chem EDUC in Google. Looking at the results, you'll see that the complete journal title is the Journal of Chemical Education. Now that we know the complete journal title, go to the library homepage and click on the gray Journals tab on the left navigation bar. In the search box, type the complete journal title. Click the magnifying glass. You'll see a list of access links for the journal title. The important thing to look for are the dates covered in each access point. In this example, there are two access points. ACS Publications, which cover 1924 to the present, and the SciTech Premium Collection, which covers 1994 to 2000. The example citation has a publication date in 2016, so you would choose the first option, ACS Publications. When working with library resources from off campus, you'll need to log in with your UH Need network ID and password, what you use to access Blackboard. That lets the system know you're a UHD student. Once you've logged in, if you keep your browser window open, you won't be asked to log in again. Once logged in, you will be taken to the publisher's website and you'll see a list of issues. At the top of the page, you can choose the year for your citation. Click the 2010s, then 2016. Each issue from that year is listed with the latest issue listed first. The example citation is from Volume 93, Issue 6. So find that in the list of issues. Click on the link. The table of contents for that issue is displayed. If you look under the title of the first article, you'll see the citation which includes the page numbers. Scroll down the table of contents until you find the article with the correct title and page numbers. To see the full text of the article, click on the article title. Here you'll see the article abstract. Under the citation information, at the top of the page, there's a blue PDF button. Clicking that button will load the full text PDF of the article. The PDF can be downloaded to your computer or saved to a USB drive. That's how to search the library for an article when you know the citation. Review this tutorial whenever you need a refresher. If you still have questions, be sure to contact the library for help. SciFinder is a specialized database for chemistry that contains an interface to search chemistry journals and a database of chemical properties, structures, spectra, and reactions. To access SciFinder from the library homepage, choose the Databases tab in the gray menu bar on the left. The library's databases are listed alphabetically, so look for the S and click on it. Scroll down until you find the SciFinder entry.
Below the name of the database, you'll see a note that indicates you need to create an account with SciFinder to use the database. The registration hyperlink is labeled Click Here to Register. In order to register from off campus, you'll have to log in to the library using your UHD ID and password, what you use to access Blackboard. You'll then be taken to SciFinder. Follow the directions, accept the license agreement, and complete the registration form. When you register for SciFinder, you must use your UHD Gator Mail account. You can't use Gmail, Yahoo, or any other mail program. You'll need to create a username and password for SciFinder. This is not the same as your UHD ID and password. If you forget your password, you'll need to reset it from the SciFinder login screen. Register for a SciFinder account now. You will receive a confirmation email from SciFinder to your Gator Mail account. This can take a few minutes. Once you receive your confirmation email, you're ready to use SciFinder. The next time you want to use SciFinder, just click on the database name and you'll be taken to the SciFinder login screen. If you already have a SciFinder account with UHD, you don't need to re-register. If you have a SciFinder account from another college or university, you will need to re-register using your UHD Gator Mail account. Log in to SciFinder. There are three components to SciFinder. Component 1 is References. This section is used to locate citations to thousands of journal articles, patents, and dissertations. Component 2 is Substances. This section includes chemical property, structure, form formula information, and spectra data. Component 3 is Reactions. This section lets you create synthetic reactions. In this session, we are going to focus on the References and Substances components. We won't be covering reactions. If you are interested in working with the Reactions database, SciFinder has an online tutorial available. Component 1 – References When you log into SciFinder, the default search is the References search. You can enter a single subject or a phrase to search for articles, patents, and other chemical literature. We are using the example purification of ethanol as our search. Type your search in the search box and press the search button. SciFinder returns a list of results. These results look different than those from most databases. SciFinder searches your search terms as a phrase. So SciFinder is searching for results that have both the concepts purification and ethanol in the articles. In the SciFinder results list, this means that the first set of results are the most relevant to your search. This set usually has the least number of hits. In this example, SciFinder identified 120 records that contained purification of ethanol as entered. That means both terms are in the results. To view the records, check the box to the left of the results. Click the Get References button. The title, citation, and at least part of the abstract for each record is listed. Scroll through the results and review the titles and abstracts to find articles that meet your search criteria. Based on the title and abstract, Record 3 looks like it's very relevant to our search on the purification of ethanol. 
To see the complete record, click on the article title. The title, authors, and abstract are found on the main part of the page. The source, the journal the article is in, is found in the box on the right. Note that in the Substances box in the record, the CAS number and compound name are listed. This tells you that the compound you are working with in your search is covered in the article. SciFinder is not a full text database, which means you cannot download a copy of the article from SciFinder itself. If you want a copy of the article, you'll need to make a note of the citation information and then search the library's online journal collection to find the full text. To return to the SciFinder homepage, click the SciFinder logo in the upper left-hand corner of the page. The second component of SciFinder is the Substances component. This section is used to locate specific information about compounds. For this session, we'll be using the Substance Identifier link at the bottom of the section. To search for a specific substance, you can use the compound name, CAS number, or formula. To find property and spectra information for a compound, type its name, CAS number, or formula in the search box. Click the search button. The record displayed has the compound CAS number, structure, molecular formula, and compound name displayed. Below these, there is a link to key physical properties. To find properties like melting point and boiling point, click on this link. Here you'll see a list of key physical properties. Below these properties is a link titled Spectra. To view the various spectra available, including IR, NMR, and mass spectra, click on the Spectra link. A tabbed box titled Experimental Spectra is displayed. Each tab provides a link to a particular spectrum type. In the case of ethanol, the NMR spectra, IR spectrum, and mass spectrum are in the first few tabs. To view a particular spectrum, click on that tab name. For this example, we'll look at the mass spectrum. The table displayed is labeled Mass Properties, Value, Condition, and Note. To view the spectrum, choose any of the C spectrum hyperlinks in the value column of the table. The different entries are just different sources for the same spectrum data. A box will pop up that displays the spectrum to the left and to the right, information that includes the spectrum ID, which you'll need when citing spectrum data, CAS number, the formula, the CAX index name, the compound name, nominal mass, and source of the data. Viewing other types of spectra are done the same way. Just choose the desired spectrum tab and click on any of the C spectrum hyperlinks in the value column of the table. If you need further assistance searching SciFinder, please contact the library using our Ask a Librarian service found on the library homepage.